this young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, half of this government, are uh, actually young noble leaders of the world. Right. We penetrate the cabinets. The change is not just happening. The change can be shaped by us. We have to prepare for a more angry world. How to prepare? Take the necessary action to create a fairer world. I see the need for a great reset. So people assume we are just going back to the good old world which we had and everything will be normal again. This is, uh, let's say, fiction. It will not happen. There is only one way this pandemic is going to go. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. The next crisis is already waiting for us around the corner. And it is the climate crisis. Oh, wow. Um, hey, hey, don't worry about all these drastic changes in our society because liars who are doing them are promising us that we'll be happy owning nothing, having no privacy, and pretty much being their slaves. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Luke Radowski here of WeAreChange.org, and we got a lot of wild news to get into, especially with all the troubling developments happening right now in eastern Ukraine. How will this situation unfold? What will be happening from here? Well, of course, we're going to be talking about that, plus a lot more all in this video, as well as talking about the latest developments happening in Canada that have been perfectly juxtaposed together in the compilation video that we played in the beginning of this clip that was made by at e Eastern freedom and I would have to say they did an incredible job highlighting the true reality of what many in power call the Great Reset exemplified by their own admissions and policies that are shaping the world right now seriously I used to video edit before and this is a masterpiece and this is why we are going to be linking the channel for more Eastern freedom videos down below in the description so you could watch it after this broadcast and these powerful men and institutions like the World Economic Forum have tentacles that extend to many places around the world, not just in Austria, Australia, New Zealand, but also, of course, Canada, which many people are reporting has officially fallen after the House of Commons just passed a motion to approve the extension of the Emergencies Act, which has been used to stifle and destroy protests in Canada. This, of course, is leaving a lot of people asking, with the protest cleared, with the protest stops, with no major blockades happening, why do you still need the, the Emergencies Act? As, of course, the state of Canada has been acting in extraordinary ways, especially when it comes to punishing organizers of this protest, as today we are finding out that one of the organizers, Tamara Lynch, was just denied bail by a liberal judge that is proceeding over her case as she is facing 10 years in jail for organizing protests in Canada. In my opinion, this is definitely a huge, over-excessive, heavy-handed punishment that is absolutely cruel, just like the behavior of the Ottawa police force that, according to newly released text messages, was gloating and celebrating the trampling of an elderly indigenous woman being stomped on by one of their police horses. Yes, one police officer is on record saying that, quote, this was awesome, specifically sharing a video of a grandmother being ran over on a mobility scooter, which, of course, the Ottawa police officers lied about afterwards, saying that it was a bike that was thrown at them. This, of course, was never true. The, the elderly woman is now being treated in a hospital, has a separated shoulder, and has sustained no other serious injuries, but still most likely faces the might of the police and authoritarian forces in Canada that have been financially attacking a lot of the protesters and trying to ruin their lives by taking away their bank accounts, which soon might extend to the scope of even targeting individuals who dare criticize the state, not just in a protest, but with speech as Dr. Jordan Peterson just came out on the record and released a video saying how one of his sources inside of the Canadian military has told him that if he has any sense that he would withdraw his money from Canadian banks and that the situation is, quote, 
far worse than he was informed of, specifically detailing the extraordinary pushback that's happening right now by the Canadian state against citizens who are demanding to hold their own government accountable. And just like we warned you yesterday, the situation in Canada could happen here in the United States. These are now also words issued by U.S. Senator Rand Paul, who just specifically said a few hours ago that, quote, we actually have in the United States an emergency act that allows the president to shut down the internet, specifically warning how there are major technological security apparatuses at play in the United States, along with emergency powers that could be implemented at any moment in order to, of course, stop the government being held accountable. And we could only hope what's happening in Canada doesn't come here to the United States, but with the way that things have been going, with the Great Reset being implemented, with the U.S. administration playing along with the whims of multinational corporations, I have to remind myself that wishful thinking is just wishful thinking and you have to be aware of everything that's going on around you. And hey, this is why we created LukeUncensored.com, our own platform where we get to have a more real and honest conversation about the true reality of the situation that we're facing. This YouTube channel is pretty much out there for the Kyles and Karens out there. It's the honey that brings in the bees. And then whack, you get a true smackdown of reality on LukeUncensored.com where, of course, we get into more real topics that, of course, we cannot discuss here on this platform. LukeUncensored.com, sign up for it right now by clicking the link down down in the description below right now. Now, whether it's a domestic problem or foreign problem, I think it's fair to say, especially if you study and understand history, that humanity is plagued by, of course, conflict. Not having it is an exception to the rule of it always being there. And this is why it's always better to be prepared rather than not, no matter what happens. And to me, this is perfectly exemplified by the ever-escalating situation happening right now in Ukraine, where the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, just announced, quote, peace keeping soldiers and tanks that have rolled into eastern Ukraine into two separatist regions that have been lobbying and fighting since March 2014 to be separated from the Ukraine state to be able to join Russia as of course these two major separatist regions the Donetsk and Lunzhank region collectively called the Donbass region are predominantly regions where people speak Russian and have more of an affiliation to the Russian state. Now the situation situation gets very tense since, of course, this is a major escalation since Ukraine does not want to release the Donbass region, which is pictured here just above my head in the right bottom corner of this map. This region ever since 2014 has also been the site of a civil conflict that has been unfolding between Russian separatists and Ukrainian military forces that have been attacking, bombing, and shelling each other for the last eight years in this specific region, with Russia now allegedly putting some of its military hardware on the front lines in the Donbass region. This signals the larger possibility of more bombing and shelling, which could escalate to a larger conflict that, of course, could unfold between Ukraine and Russia. Now, obviously, Ukraine is the significant underdog here, being surrounded by more advanced and readily available military hardware and soldiers, which, of course, leaves Ukraine significantly outmatched if there was a one-on-one -on -one military conflict. Conflict. This is why, according to many admitted sources, the strategy of Ukraine would be an Afghanistan-style rebellion against potential Russian soldiers moving into their country. Now, the Russian state military has also released a bunch of photos and videos of people celebrating in the Donbass region, specifically flying the Russian flags, also releasing a lot of fireworks, as some people have celebrated this move. Now, the United States that has been partaking in arming and training a lot of the civilians to combat a possible Russian incursion incursion has decided to respond to all of this with sanctions as well as stark warnings that the quote Russian invasion of Ukraine has officially begun. Now the specific sanctions issued by Biden are imposed against people in the Donbass region. Biden has stopped from issuing full-blown sanctions against Russia. Sanctions are of course a form of economic warfare and predominantly, not always, but predominantly usually have a very negative effect on the citizens of those specific countries that are sanctioned that are usually hurt the most comparatively of course to the politicians and oligarchs who really truly do call 
both shots. Now, will there be any more specific sanctions against the politicians and oligarchs that are calling the shots here? I don't know, but that's what some people have been calling for. European Union leaders are meeting right now. And one of the biggest responses from all of this was Germany just announcing the halting of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline from Russia, which of course has raised the price of energy and for right now has created more of a complex energy situation that is progressively going to get worse and end up costing people a lot of money. Before even getting into all the financial ramifications, we also have to recognize that this strategy by Putin is also a very similar one, which he has implemented in the country of Georgia in 2008, when of course that country was on the verge of joining NATO and implemented a very similar policy, which is unfolding right now in eastern Ukraine. Now, the bigger question is, where will things go from here? Well, they're extremely volatile. One, because now Russian soldiers are on the front lines of conflicts that have been happening for over eight years. There's a possibility for a staged or real conflict that could unfold that could, of course, escalate the situation dramatically and have Russian soldiers moving in into Ukraine, which would be absolutely disastrous for everyone. The bigger question that should be asked here is if the West will accept Russia's acquisition of the Donbass region. And uh, for right now, it looks like they will and there won't be any kind of response against it other than of course financial ramifications for russia russia already financially has the gdp of italy and isn't a very rich and prosperous country so the elimination of their pipeline is a major deal since of course they are a, a major chief energy exporter so how do i see things moving forward from here well there is a possibility that russia could be satisfied with this larger pushback that the west might not even respond here other than with financial ramifications and i think there's a possibility from 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 things to potentially cool down from here but on the other hand, there is also a lot of potential and a lot of danger in this Donbass region that whether staged or real could escalate to a full-blown conflict between Russia and Ukraine. I think the possibility of that is less, but it's still there and it still has, of course, very dangerous implications, not just for the people of Ukraine or Russia, but for the people of the world with the alliances entangled here. And of course, the larger implications, especially when it comes to the financial ramifications that the world is dealing with right now, that significantly is leaving everyone on edge who is paying attention to this situation. Putin, by the way, also just got parliamentary support and permission to use force outside of Russia. I think the best case scenario that we could hope for here is that the tensions will subside, that diplomacy will work, but of course that is just wishful thinking. This says, of course, the price of oil has just surged over $100 a barrel. Something, of course, that I've been telling a lot of people was going to happen. And as the conflict escalates, you, you could expect this price to go up as there, of course, are other economic and social political factors that will continue to rise the price of energy moving forward from here. There's a lot of economic ramifications here. Two totally different strategies. Lots of craziness even coming out of TikTok. And as we mentioned from the beginning of this video, instability is usually precious opportunities for a lot of powerful individuals who of course strive to benefit off of them and they only benefit off of them in the absence of information and people truly understanding what's going on if you thought i did somewhat of an okay job explaining the very complex situation unfolding right now in ukraine share this video with your friends and family members that means the world to me and helps this independent media operation grow a couple days ago, I did a very important video talking about the larger economic ramifications of what's happening right now. If you want to watch that video, click right, right here, right now, and then you'll be able to find out more information about that. I got one more video coming your way on LukeUncensored.com. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, and this is why. I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on WeAreChange.org.